For more on today's vote on Iran, we are joined once again by Ervan Abrahamian. He is an Iran specialist and distinguished professor of history at the City University of New York. Welcome. Thank you. Um, as we heard in this report, the IAEA's decision to censure Iran, I believe this is the, the first time it's taken action like this in almost four years. And it was approved overwhelmingly. So what does that tell us about the state of negotiations between Iran and those nations that are opposed to its nuclear program? It's a major victory for the Obama administration. And Ahmadinejad in Tehran must be nostalgic for the good old days of Bush. Because in the old days, it was very hard for the U.S. administration to rally um, not just the Europeans, but also Russia and China. And now, clearly, uh, Obama's managed to persuade, persuade them to come along with uh, a stronger policy towards Iran. Was this a surprise? Uh, this type of vote, and especially with China voting, it, that was a surprise to me. I, the, the Russians had already indicated that although they didn't think about that sanctions would be a good idea, they would be along to, willing to go along with it because they saw no other choice. But the Chinese uh, vote clearly is really uh, uh, part of the, some sort of deal that uh, Obama has made with the Chinese when he's uh, made his trip to, to China. And if these nations go forward to impose tougher sanctions against Iran, I think the question mark had been Russia and China. Does the way this censure vote went imply that Russia and China will go along on the whole concept of tougher sanctions? Uh, Clearly, yes. I, I mean, it's no guaranteed, but it's indication that they will. And I think the Iranian government has to take that into account, that the dangers of uh, sanctions are much more real now than they were ever before. Could this censure have a negative impact on Iran? In other words, could they become so angry, so upset about all of this, that they simply decide not to negotiate, not to in any way compromise? Well, there'll be some people who will raise that argument, but I don't think most of the leadership will go along that road because that, the, the, the costs for Iran are quite, quite considerable, economic sanctions. And Iran isn't really a police state like Saddam Hussein. You can say, well, sanctions won't work. It's a much more pluralistic society. The business community has considerable say, the bazaar especially, and they would not be in favor of economic isolation. Why do you think the IAEA acted now, the timing? Uh, I think two things. One is al Baradei was about to leave. And al Baradei had bent backwards trying to help Iran for the last few years. And the, Iran hadn't been forthcoming. So it's a way for him to tell Iran that if you don't really come on board, things are going to get much worse for Iran. And let's take a, a, a peek into the near future. What's going to happen? Well, I, I think Iran will come up with some sort of uh, offer Initially, when the offer was made about in enrichment abroad and then taking it back to Iran, they actually said yes. And then later they started uh, wavering about it. It's possible that they'll go back to their original position and be much more forthcoming. Now, they might bargain about how much will take it abroad, how much, how soon it should be brought back. So there'll be a sort of negotiation on the refinement. But I think they will go along with their initial uh, proposal. Irvan Abrahamian, thank you very much. Thank you.